Hey, Denelma High School, this is Mr. Aiden, and this is the first vodcast for physics, for AP Physics, for the year 2012 and 2013. So, uh, let's get to it. This is Defining Physics, 1.1, Defining Physics. And ultimately, physics comes down to two main terms. It comes down to scalar and vector. And the biggest difference between what's something a scalar quantity and a vector quantity, which means there are numbers, is scalars have magnitude, Whereas the vectors have magnitude and direction. Now, this word magnitude, it's just a fancy word for number. So, a scalar quantity would have just a number, two, three. Um, a vector would have that number associated with a direction. Let me give you an example of some scalar quantities. A scalar quantity would be like distance, meters. I walked three meters today. Um, its position would be either I'm at positive 3 or I'm at negative 3. So you can see that direction is coming into play with a positive or negative. Or I could say I'm standing 3 meters north. That's my position. If I want to find my displacement though, it would be my final minus my initial. My final position minus my initial position. So if I started at 0 and I ended at 5, 5 minus 0 is 5 meters. That's my displacement and I would that would be positive 5 meters. Uh, speed. Speed is a scalar quantity. That's like, I'm driving 20 meters per second, okay? Um, that's really slow. But it, 20 meters per second is just a number. Velocity would be you're going positive 20 meters per second or 20 meters per second north. Um, and how do you find velocity? You take your displacement, that's the x2 minus x1, divided by your time. That's an easy way to find your velocity. And another term that's a vector is acceleration. Acceleration has units of meters per second squared. It's meters per second per second. And that's where you take the difference of your velocities, your velocity final minus your velocity initial, and divide by time. When we have vectors, um, any vector with its direction, we want to split it up to, into what we call vector components. Okay, vector components. If you take a look here, I have 10 meters per second. Uh, this arrow is 10 meters per second, and it's going at 30 degrees. So that, that 30 degrees is my direction. The 10 meters per second is my, my magnitude, of course. And what I want to do with this is I want to take this quantity, and I want to split it up. And I hope, hopefully you see this. This is split up into an x component and a y component, okay? A, a horizontal and a vertical. Take a look at the 5 meters per second at 120 degrees. He's going in the x as well. And you see I always start at the, the tail, at the tail. And I'm going in an x direction, and then I go to a y direction. Those are called my components. Okay. If you ever want to find your components, we use trigonometry in order to find our components. The easiest way to find my x component, because x is cosine or adjacent to, x is always going to be my resultant or what we call our hypotenuse, cosine of the angle, cosine of theta. If I ever want to find my y, y is associated with opposite, y is going to be the resultant, or the hypotenuse, sine of theta. And guys, if I ever want to find my angle, the easiest way to find your angle is to use the tangent of theta, and it's going to be the y, or opposite, over x, the adjacent. So let's uh, let's break these apart and take a look at these components and, and let's actually get get some numbers to this problem. So here, if I want to find my x direction or the the x component, I'm going to do 10 meters per second cosine of 30 degrees. And if I do 10 cosine 30, I get 8.66. Try that on your calculator, see if you get it. If you don't get that, dude, you're in radians. We want to be in degrees. So go to the menu on your calculator. The y, we're going to do 10, sine of 30 degrees. And sine of 30 is always 0.5, so half of 10 is 5. So here I have 8.66 meters per second, and I have 5 meters per second. And you can see this, this x line is much longer than this y line. Okay, Not much longer, but a little bit longer. And you can see the magnitudes. We have 8.66, we have 5. The x is a little bit bigger. We do the same exact thing for the other one. We're going to do 5, which is my hypotenuse, cosine of 120 degrees. And if I do 5 cosine of 120, it'll kick out two, negative 2.5 on your calculator, negative 2.5 meters per second. Now, that negative is showing you that 
horizontal is going to be going in the negative direction. It's going into the negative, opposite of what we did in the first one. The y is going to be 5 sine of 120 degrees. 5 sine of 120 gives you 4.33 meters per second. And that'll kick out a positive number because, of course, we're still going positive or up in the y. Now, if we want to find our resultant vector, what, what I mean is we want to put these all together, okay? Now, and the whole reason why we take these guys, and I'm just going to erase this real quick, is when we want to put these together, and the reason we break these up into components is we're always going to take our x's and sum up our x's. So we can add up our x's. We add 8.66, we add negative 2.5, and our x ends up being 6.16 meters per second. And the sum of my y's, if I add up my y's, I got 5, I got 4.33, that's 9.33 meters per second. If you have an x going positive 6.16, that's like going that way, and we have a y which is positive 9.33, a little bit bigger, that gives us what we call a hypotenuse or a resultant vector. And how do you find the resultant vector? We use the Pythagorean theorem, don't we? We do. 6.16 squared, x squared, plus y squared, and we add those bad boys up, and then we square root the, the answer, and that gives us our resultant, or our hypotenuse, and if we do that on our calculator, our hypotenuse ends up being 11.18 meters per second. And if we want to find the angle, I do that tangent formula that I had before, tangent of theta equals y over the x. So I take 9.33, divide by 6.16, do the inverse of tangent, and if you do that on your calculator, and, and hopefully maybe you, you do while you're watching this video, um, you would end up finding your theta to be about 56.6 degrees. So still in that first quadrant. Okay. Now what I want to show you is if I take this vector right here, okay, and I take this vector right here, and I take a look and I see what happens, the result in him going from there to there, from start to finish, you can see this vector, that's awful looking arrow in the x, and y, do you see how the y is a little bit bigger than the x? The y is 9.33, the x is 6.16, and this resultant, this big arrow right here, is 11.18. Okay? That's how you split things up in the vector components. That's how you add them together. That's how you get your result at the end. We're going to be practicing some of that in class, so make sure you know how to do it. Hey, go to www.mrayton.com. Go to the AP Physics. And uh, go to, there's a little link there for 1.1, Defining Physics. Go on that. There's a Google Docs it will throw you to, and you'll do uh, just a few problems. It's not too bad. Uh, dude, I am psyched about this school year. I hope you are too, and uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.